find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 74, coming at you here from uh, Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, as producer here with the uh, some local promotions, some documentaries as well, all kinds of so- fun stuff going on at SorgatronMedia.com, and uh, look out, of course, for IndieWrestling.us coming soon. Uh, but with me is my cohort, my compatriot in uh, in the in the indie wrestling adventure he's a uh, uh commentator down at inspire pro wrestling in the uh texas austin texas area and he's coming at us from corpus christi himself he's aiming peyton aiming to please on the twitters if you want to hit him up hello sorgatron how are you this evening good 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 you're with us you're awake i am awake <laughs> you're excited it is, it is, it is. It, this is the late show, so it's always. Funny. It, you guys, gotta, we're back to the late show. Energy. We don't have two two interviews, although I think uh, 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 Sugar Dunkerton was enough energy for for everybody uh, for a while. So definitely, <laughs> it was great to see all those guys at Super Indies past weekend. We'll talk about that. Have some guests on later in the show to, uh, that were in attendance that weren't under production, like I was, unfortunately, uh, to really kind of absorb what happened that night. But in the meantime, please check out everything wrestling mayhem show dot com, including this and other shows talking about all kinds of pro wrestling. And uh, you can, uh, of course, subscribe to Indie Re- Indie Mayhem Show on your iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube. Daily Motion. Look for it on all those platforms. Subscribe to it. Comment on it. Share it with your friends. Anything out there? Anybody out there you think should check out indie wrestling or learn more about it? I hope we hope. I'm hoping we help you guys uh, 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 further that conversation about what's going on out there. Big thanks to our friends BasicSickness.com for the intro, outro music for this and the Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, the main Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, great music, great great guys. Uh, worked with him for several years here in the Pittsburgh area and uh, support some free music over there as we're supporting uh, indie wrestling as well. Independent music is important too, and of course uh, you can join us here live. We start the wrestling conversation at 9 p.m. Eastern Time at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. And we get to this show around about 11 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll let you do the math wherever you're at. Uh, and so much more. So let's get right into it there. Eamon, who do we have this week? This week we got a, a very special guest uh, here on the Indie Mayhem Show uh, uh, that I wanted to have on uh, for a little while now. Uh, he actually recently... Uh, debuted for Inspire Pro Wrestling at our last show, and that's my first chance getting to see him perform live. Uh, but he uh, has been traveling all throughout the Midwest and even further than that. Uh, has had some really great uh, showings as of late, and uh, definitely wanted to get him on to sort of share his story. Uh, joining us this week on the Indie Mayhem Show, uh, Kid Gorgeous Donovan Donhausen. Donovan, how are you this evening? Uh, I'm pretty good. Uh, you know, tired, but everyone is. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Doing really good. Uh, good to be on this week. Uh, I guess the first question we kind of start everyone off with uh, on this show is, uh, uh, what is your first ever memory of professional wrestling? Ooh, uh, that would have to be either the New Age Outlaws shoving Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie off the stage on Raw, mm, nice. or Kane ripping the cell door off and debuting. One of those two. Those are, I can't, those are pretty I good. I can't remember which pretty one. Good. <laughs> so you were kind of a. Uh, would you say you were kind of got around that time of like the attitude there and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, somewhere uh, around like somewhere 1997, there. somewhere like right around there. Awesome. And, right. and what was it? I guess. I guess what was it about wrestling that sort of caught your eye? I mean, obviously, besides, I mean, those things you just mentioned are kind of kind of eye catching to say the least. But well, I I grew up. Uh, my dad made me watch horror. Well, he didn't make me, but we watched horror <laughs> movies all the time. So obviously, like. Kane appealed to me and Chainsaw Charlie, uh, chainsawing himself out of a, a wooden box. I don't know. Reminded me of Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> so, yeah, that, nice, that, that probably caught my eye as the theatrics of it. Awesome, really cool. Um, so, going into sort of your your start in wrestling, how did how did you decide that you? Uh, wanted to uh, uh, become a professional wrestler. I know that you uh, you uh, trained under uh, Truth Martini and Jimmy Jacobs, but how did you sort of get to that point where you decided I, I wanted to do this? Uh, well, I you know I've always wanted to do it since I was a kid, but I didn't know how to go about it. 
and then I found out uh, Truth School was actually like a mile away from my house. Um, oh, really? Nice. Yeah, so a friend told me about it because I was telling him I wanted to become a wrestler. He's like, actually, I looked it up, and uh, Truth Martini has a school, and it's like right by our houses. So <laughs> he he got he got me on there. That's awesome. So we went together. Um, yeah, we trained a little bit together. He didn't he didn't get to finish because of some health issues, but you know that's he's the one who got me in. So that's that's how I found out about that. It was kind of just luck. Awesome, yeah. So, were you familiar at all with with uh, uh, their work uh, on the independents or stuff like that? Or did you know a lot about about indie wrestling before? Like, like you said, you kind of um, uh, found at, out about at that this? time. I had like I'd known kind of about it, but I didn't have access to it at all. Um, mm. I don't. I don't know. I don't have a computer, so I can't like <laughs> download anything. Or I have my phone. That's about it. I don't even have a TV. Um, I just I don't have time. Um. But yeah, no, I like I would go to Ring of Honor shows here and there, so that that's how I knew that about that. But aside from that, it mostly I had to watch just you know WWE. Awesome, definitely. Uh, so, what was it like training under them? Uh, uh, did you think uh, did you think it was you know did you find it to be harder than you once thought, or, or what were some of the things that you know you sort of learned through your time of training besides how to actually be a pro wrestler? Yeah. Uh, it was kind of what I expected. I went into it expecting it to be really hard. So I already had that going like well for me just because I knew what to expect sort of. Um, it was really hard though, but it was great training under uh, Truth and Jimmy. And I'm glad I got to work with Jimmy before, you know, he moved on and got his job in the WWE. Yeah, so definitely. that was cool because I got to get some ring time in with him and everything. And then just the guidance of Truth, he, he's great. He's a genius, so, you know, it was, uh, I I couldn't have asked for a better school to go to. Yeah, it seems like that, 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 that area and that, and that school in particular sort of is producing a lot of really great talent, Mm -hmm. uh, over Mm -hmm. the years. Um, so, uh, and, and if I could going put, to, cause you, uh, and if, I, ahead, if I could point out, I, I actually got to visit his school uh, when we we're working on a project here, uh, a couple years ago. And, and it's nice cause it's, it's one of those schools that's not in a storage locker. Um, and, and so uh, he's got a really nice facility up there and, uh, and uh, definitely it's, and of course this is up in the Detroit area, uh, for those unfamiliar as well. So, yeah, no, it's great. Like we, we had guests come in, like, uh, Sabin's been in there. Jay lethal was in there. Nice. Um, Col- Colt has been in there. So, you know, it, it's true. So he's got a lot of friends mm-hmm. and, uh, they, they're always willing to come help out, which is great. That's they cool. help out the younger guys. They helped out me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Really cool. So they're always uh, there willing to lend, you know, advice and everything. Yeah, definitely. Um, now I know I, how long has it been since you, since you, I guess, started in wrestling, uh, would you say? Uh, well, here's the thing. I trained about two years ago. I didn't do anything with it for the longest time. So I went and kind of retrained myself. I would Mm. say seven months ago. Like I did like a few shows here and there within that two years, but that was it. I don't really count that at this point. Uh, my real start was about seven months ago. So I'm only about, you know, I'm not, I'm not that far in as of right now. Yeah, and, and but I, I would definitely say in those seven months, it seems like you've gotten a lot of uh, really great uh, opportunities and got to showcase yourself. Uh, a great yeah, deal absolutely. I'm, I'm trying to make up for a lot of time <laughs> since I wasted so much. So I'm really pushing yeah, myself. I've gotten you know lucky to have the opportunity to work with uh, Johnny Gargano and Ricochet and Cody Deaner, guys like that. Like I don't know, pretty early on, but it's definitely helped and benefited me, and they've been great. So. Definitely, and and for someone also so young in, I know uh, I, you mention a lot on on your Twitter and stuff like that. So sort of you're traveling as well because I know you're working a lot of different places. Obviously, you came down for Texas, and and you'll be down for Texas this weekend as well. Uh, but yep. throughout the Midwest, and and I think you even went to Toronto not too long ago. If yeah, I'm, I'm back in Toronto in two weeks. Awesome. So, so yeah. So what is it like, kind of getting on the road like that and sort of traveling and 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 getting to work all these different places? Uh, see, that's what I like about it is I get to travel and see, I mean, I don't want to say the world, but like I, I've been to Canada. That's kind of you know, <laughs> like a different country. It counts a little bit. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's part of what I like is being on the road and seeing things. Cause otherwise, like a lot of guys, it's fine, but they stay around their areas and like, you know, that's fine if that's what you want to do, but I want to go out. I want to see everything. 
on a work, you know, wrestle new people and get every possible, you know, thing out of wrestling that I can. Definitely. And it kind of takes back to our, our, we had an interview last week, as we mentioned with Sugar Dunkerton, and he mentioned a lot about sort of the travel and stuff like that, of, of how important it is. But I think for somebody that's obviously so uh, early into this as you, you to sort of get that traveling under your belt is, is got to be a big thing. Was that something that was kind of instilled to you as well uh, by truth and stuff like that, that about going out and traveling? Yeah, he said, go out, travel, keep learning, keep wrestling different guys, you know. He's like, that's how you learn. You wrestle, wrestle more and more and more and more and more in different areas. Where you learn all the different styles. So I said, you know, no, that's absolutely what I want to do. Um, like I drove out, I did the training camp with uh, Ring of Honor and worked with Adam Cole and Delirious, and it was great. I learned a ton from them. Like, I don't mind traveling. I drove awesome. there by myself, so. And, and I think... Yeah, I mean, that's just something I think I, I hear a lot all the time. It's just about the, the whole idea of getting out and traveling. It's kind of, a, uh, I think, an important thing, especially in wrestling. Um, yeah. Going towards, uh, obviously, you're, you're starting, I mean, seven months or so in. Uh, what are some of your bigger goals, uh, at least for maybe a year or two years from now in wrestling, when it comes to maybe, you know, people you want to face, places you want to work? Is there anything you sort of have in mind? Uh, yeah, I mean – if things keep going the way they are, like, and I keep getting these opportunities, which would be great, um, which, you know, uh, I'd really like to work Matt Seidel, which, you know, hopefully that happens. Um, that's one of my main things, main people I wanted to wrestle. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've just, I want to wrestle over in New York. Um, I haven't wrestled in Philadelphia aside from the camp. Mm. So I'd like to do that. I'd like to get over to California. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. Because I don't know, I never know what's going to happen. So, but awesome. those, those are the main things. Definitely taking it, taking it as it comes. Um, I guess one of our more common questions we have on the show uh, uh, for some of our guests is, uh, uh, what are you watching currently when it comes to uh, stuff you study or, or just for recreation when it comes to wrestling? Uh, a lot of uh, William Regal. I like him. I like watching him a lot. Shawn Michaels. Uh, really, I. I watch WWE um, and Ring of Honor. I've got some friends over there, so I like watching them. It's cool to see them on TV now. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's you know I study like I study guys like Regal and and Shawn Michaels. So just definitely. their old matches. Yeah, definitely. I, like you said, kind of do get like a wide range of like Ring of Honor stuff, but also like the stuff you see on on the mainstream. Uh, I guess another important question would be. Uh, it's kind of something we, we ask to some people uh, when it comes to people's idea of their aspirations. Is WWE a big goal for you? Is one of the things like... Yeah, um, absolutely. That's that's always been the end goal. That's 100% where I want to go. Yeah, because I know, I know sometimes with, with indie wrestling, sometimes people, you know, want to make it, you know... And sometimes we've, we've even discussed on the show if WWE is always everyone's end goal. Um, yeah. But, but but it that seems to be your way that you want to kind of get on that as as high as possible. Uh, yeah, to, yeah, to absolutely. Like, you know, that's that's the top. That's where I want to be. I want to be on the top. Definitely, absolutely. Um, and and kind of uh, uh, one of our questions that we also ask, uh, and feel free to take it uh, in any which way. People tend to uh, take it in many different directions. Uh, but since we are a podcast about indie wrestling, we kind of want to. We kind of want to find out, uh, in your opinion, what do you think is the uh, the best thing and the worst thing about indie wrestling? Uh, the best thing is, I, honestly, I know I keep saying this, but the traveling. Mm. I just get to see a bunch of places that without indie wrestling, I would not get to see. Most likely, I'd probably be stuck at like a job somewhere and just, you know, not not moving, just staying still, which I don't like. I like to I like to move. Um, the worst thing. Uh, is also sometimes traveling because if you blow out your tire on the road uh, on a 20 hour drive, that's not very fun. Or, um, yeah. <laughs> for example, uh, instead of a nine hour drive to Philly, it took 13 hours because there was a blizzard. So I had to power through the blizzard, uh, make it there. I think I got an hour of sleep in my car and it was negative five degrees outside. And uh, I wound up to waste time. I paid for a movie ticket. I found the, the longest movie 
and I slept. And wow. then I went and did this camp. So yeah, wow. that, that's probably the worst thing. Is is tra- traveling is the best and the worst. It's at kinda, the same time. It, and it's sort of uh, also what well, we kind of talked with Sugar about. So that indie, is it that indie wrestling lifestyle where it's kind of like kind of I guess a better question is like what what kind of compels someone to be like yeah I'll, I'll you know do those you know like a twenty hour drive or whatever you know to to go on this wrestling show is it just sort of a wrestler mentality is there anything behind it. Uh, yeah, I think so because I don't. I don't know. I don't think it, it takes a lot to commit to that. Like I'm going to drive 20 hours here for, you know, whatever. Like you know, I get I, I get a great match out of it, but a lot of people probably wouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like you said, like my tire popped on the way down the 20 hour drive, uh, but still, it was fine. It was all worth it at the end, and that's really I think what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. It's like. Hearing the crowd react to you, and if they liked you or didn't like you, either way, you're getting emotion out of them, and it makes it all worth it. Absolutely. And that's a good attitude to have in, in this kind of a business. Um, yeah, definitely. like, I, I used that the tire, like, that whole thing, I used it to motivate me. I was like, you know what, I'm still going, I'm going to make it, and I'm going to put on the best possible match I can have. And that's, that's the, the attitude I try to have. That's the other thing. After after a story like that, after, after something like that, we're like, well, I did that... I did this this one time and I got I survived that. I can probably yeah. I can probably be okay with the next trip, right? Like, like Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, so I mean that, that, that that's nice that you have that like in the bank and be like, you know, when somebody's like, "Oh, I got to drive 2 hours to the show." And you're like, "You know what I did this one time?" And then, and uh, then, and two, then hours, <laughs> 2 hours is nothing, you know. That's what's great. It, it just keeps Definitely. like 3 hours is nothing, 4 hours is nothing. It's just mm-hmm. not now it's starting to stack up. Mhm. Awesome, definitely, and I can attest to that because that that twenty hour drive did end in a really great match uh, at Inspire Pro Wrestling. So uh, I will attest to that. Um, uh, well, well, thank you very much, Donovan, for uh, for being on the show this week. Uh, yeah, if no, you have thank any, you. Uh, no, definitely. Uh, if you have any upcoming events that you'll be appearing at that you would like to uh, plug, or uh, if people want to follow you on social media, uh, uh, feel free to plug that uh, plug away. All right, yeah, uh, I've got AW Vanguard this weekend. Um, in Chicago. I've got Inspire on Sunday in Austin, Texas. Um, and then next weekend I will be in at Destiny Wrestling in Toronto. So yeah, I've got uh, Twitter is the Donovan Allen. Um, that's Allen with the E-N, not the A-N. Uh, <laughs> and then Instagram is, uh, I've, I post wrestling pictures and stuff on there in my travels. That's uh, the Donovan Allen one. So yeah, that's that's about it. Awesome. Very cool. And, and thank you again for coming on. And, and uh, anyone listening who uh, may be unfamiliar, unfamiliar with Donovan, uh, be sure to uh, check out a local show if you see him on the card, because uh, he is definitely uh, an up-and-comer you should definitely be keeping your eyes on. Uh, I'm saying, I've said definitely a lot, but hey. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, so, Sorg, uh, I guess it's time to dive into some of the stuff we're uh, doing uh, in the world of indie wrestling. That's right, Eamon. We had a pretty big one over the weekend. One of the biggest shows of the year. A lot of talent involved in this. IWC Super Indie 14. And of course, whenever I work a show, um, it's 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 kind of hard because I'm in, really enveloped in like doing the switching, doing a lot of the other stuff, making sure everything's going well on the video production side. And especially we had a, a couple of new guys on the camera, so I was even more involved in making sure they were in the right place and kind of teaching them as we go. Uh, so so there's a lot of that just doesn't sink in from the show. And I really need to watch back of these and be like, oh, that was a good show, or or, or I'll probably just hate all my camera work as, as I typically do. Uh, but uh, anyways, I'm I'm just very hard on myself, but anyways, uh, so so we had on uh, two guys that were sitting second row at, at Super Indie, checking it out. I believe we had Bobby on here before to talk about his mm-hmm. first ever indie show he attended, which was IWC uh, last month for for the dance. So he joins us again. Hi, Bobby. Welcome back to the show, Bobby FJ. Hi. Hi. We went to a wrestling show this weekend. You did, Bobby. Good job. Yeah. Good job. It was awesome. Also with us, uh, his his compatriot at the show is the Riz. He's a, a fellow correspondent on InsertCoinToBegin.com as well, and Riz plays games on the Twitter where he plays games. It's pretty yeah, self-explanatory. There you go. And now, now Riz, you know, again to requalify, he is a long, 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 long time IWC fan. Been going for years, longer than I showed up in the in the company uh, as a fan. I don't. I'm, I'm trying to think 
and trust me, that's hard to do. Uh, I don't think I've missed the Super Indy in a while. <gasps> nice. 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 Like, I, maybe there was one time, but yeah, I don't think I missed one. Nice. Well, so, not not like one first time for Super Indy ever. Mm-hmm. I mean, I started in 06. So, so I mean, let's get into this. So we, we've, of course, been talking a lot about Super Indy in the last couple of, of, of weeks mm-hmm. leading into it. It kind of kind of shows you how big it is, at least for us, going into it as fans of, of, of the product. Uh, but so what did you think? Uh, well, let's go with you, Riz. Uh, since you've, okay. you've been to a lot of Super Indies, uh, I think it's hard to compare. I think it's hard to... to I, I don't think you're going to get a Super Indie that beats any other Super Indie at this point, no. as far as these no, tournaments no, no, no. go. These tournaments are the guys that are coming up. You know, I mean, guys like CM Punk, AJ Styles, Chris, Christopher Daniels have been part of these things over the years, over the 14 years they've been doing it. Uh, how did this year compare? This year, I, I think, compared really well. Mm-hmm. I mean, you meshed up, and even the finals represented it. You meshed up the future, the past, and the present of the talent that we have here in either Pittsburgh or in other parts of the you know U.S. Mm-hmm. You have guys from PWG coming over to wrestle here in Pittsburgh, in Elizabeth. Uh, you And it... It was pretty good. I mean, I I I felt comfortable being there and watching great professional wrestling. Uh, even though I know there's some people who don't think it was that great, but it was still a really good showing by everybody involved. Uh, and are we are we allowed to say who won, or do you, you want to spoil? No, you that can say. Me? I mean, it's public knowledge. I mean, it's on the internet. You can say yeah. that. Uh, Dylan Bostic. Oh, he ruined it for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's, I, I I think he's, he's coming up mm-hmm. very mm-hmm. fast. Mm-hmm. He has the gimmick. He I had has, truffle butter in my head the entire drive back. <laughs> I, 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 I know Sugar Dunkerton uh, tweeted out that he had it in his head. <laughs> And uh, while tweeting that, and I'm like, and, and he be, had to listen to it the entire time he was there. And to be clear, uh, this the what what was this that you guys were talking about? The his theme, his uh, entrance music was yeah. uh, truffle butter. Yeah, sh- truffle butter, truffle butter. Yeah, that's what it is. By Drake. Yeah. Oh jeez. Uh, so, but honestly, like I said, the finals were uh, Ray Rowe, Dylan Bostic, and. Alex Daniels. Alex Daniels. Uh, <laughs> trained by da- uh, Johnny Gargano. By, by I, the way. He's going to be a big star, I think. Mm-hmm. He's... If, if, yeah. I I pictured him as what Facade was. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's very... He, uh, he is fairly new. Mm-hmm. He's going to be a little green. Uh, but mm-hmm. his talent, you know... Allows him to hide some of that fact. Right. Let me ask you. So, so there's they 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 had a time limit draw, fifteen minutes plus another. I think what they give him two or five minutes uh, on yeah, top of that. Uh, two more five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, they did it twice, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, jeez, yeah. that got so long. Um, uh, uh, him and uh, Joshua Singh, I think it, it was the last names pronounced. Both Johnny Gargano uh, students, by the way. Mm-hmm. And uh, how? I was a little iffy after seeing that, and I've seen both of those guys before, and I, mm-hmm. I was—I uh, think they kind of stretched it by making them do 15 minutes. To be honest, mm-hmm. uh, how do you think that both of them came off in general, in comparison? I guess in, in this tournament, especially Alex doing three matches. Uh, 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 go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Bobby. I went for. I was gonna say. Match. I was gonna say the first match uh, last month with them. You could tell they were kind of getting like the Joshua Singh was really tired during it because I mean it was a long match. Which, it was. It was. You know anybody would have been. And they were both pretty tired. This this was this was a really good match this time. I actually wanted them to go more <laughs> with them too. Like it um, wasn't it wasn't a bad match. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. Like, it, honestly, there um, unless you're hearing something different, 
there wasn't really a horrible match on the card. No, no, no. My there biggest wasn't. problems is, and, and, and I understand why some of these things happen. Like I, I hate screw jobs in these tournaments and, and you're going to have to do something like that. Cause there's, there's whatever storylines are coming up or anything he like that. Gonna be healed. Yeah, yeah. He's got to He's got to heal, man. Um, and, and we're, you know, there was some stuff that happened to set up for cage fury. There's going to be war games. There's going to be stuff like that. Um, but I, I, you know, so we didn't get, I would have loved to see. I wanted to see a real hentai versus Bostic match. Mm-hmm. And uh-huh. we got, we ended up getting a hurt hentai versus Bostic match. So, I mean, that's something that me personally, as a fan, I'm kind of disappointed because, like, you know, I, I love seeing hentai go. He's a guy with mm-hmm. history in the tournament. The first winner, I think he won a 10th one too or something like that. Um, and, 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 and I'd love to see him just go at it with a new guy like Dylan Bostic, you know, and uh, unfortunately, you know, because. Because of how how it turned out, it didn't happen. But that's fine. That's you know. Uh, but there was plenty going on. I think it was my not the biggest tournament that they've done, numbers wise. I think it's, it's well, they did a two day one a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, that I think had sixteen people in it or something like that. So, um, so 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 I think we had ten or eleven. I think in this one. So that was eleven. That was eleven because it was odd. I think it was, yeah, I think it was 11 because we had a buy. Oh, well. yeah, that's so, right. That's right. Uh, but it, um, uh, it, it felt very solid. Mm-hmm. It did. Mm-hmm. It was very well put together. Uh, and I think the crowd was into it really good, really mm-hmm. well. In the first half, and then you can see it trickle down a little bit, but they were still you know, really into it during the entire thing. And it's a, it's uh, a very long show. It, it, yeah. It's it's uh, it clocked in the DVD clocked in under three hours of course but you are fitting at least twelve matches in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and but also you have to take into account that with these twelve matches, you're also getting probably you're going to get nine wrestler or you're going to get nine matches with three wrestlers in it. What? No, I no, 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 no. I, I, I know what you're math. saying. You're, you're going to see repeats. Yeah, is what you're going to see repeats. Right? Like we saw, kind of... we saw Alex Daniels three times. We got saw yeah. Dylan Baskin mm-hmm. three times. We saw Ryan, uh, uh, Ryan, Raymond Rowe three times, for instance. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're yeah, saying that I, kind I of. I can't math today, sword. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't, don't, don't tell uh, me math. So, 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 Bobby, this is your second show of this, of this, mm-hmm. of this level, I guess you could say, um, yeah. and 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 arguably probably one of the better ones. So what, what were your kind of impressions coming out of it? Um, going into it last month when they announced the participants, I had no idea who Trevor Lee <laughs> and Andrew Everett were. And then out of the blue, on I was listening to We Watch Wrestling podcast, and they were talking about the tag tournament in PWG. Mm-hmm. DT4. Yeah. And um, Matt McCarthy said... He's like, well, Andrew Everett and Trevor Lee are in this, so they're either uh, not going to do well at all or they're going to win the whole thing. Well, they won the whole thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> and like from there, I started like learning more about these guys, and now like watching their match, their, both their matches, I mean, these guys can go. They're really good. Um, mm-hmm. I was really impressed with those two. Uh, their match, I thought, was the best match of the night. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. with just just the comedy in the match, I didn't think there would be any comedy in it, and it it was hilarious. Like when he did the somersault, and like just rolled on top of him, and the whole crowd started chanting, "Holy, you know what?" Hmm. Um, it it was one of the funniest moments of the of the night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I won't talk about the other funniest moment, <laughs> uh, but it, it was really good. <laughs> it, it was a good show. Um, Sugar Dunkerton and Cedric uh, Alexander were that was match was amazing. Um, uh, you know, even, even like the local guys really did well too. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, it just, it just wasn't like the, the superstars they brought in that were like, you know, having good matches. Everybody was. So. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and this was, this was weird for me because this was the first time I've seen a super indie 
just be about the tournament and have just one match in it that mm-hmm. wasn't tournament related. Yeah, and and I actually I thought I thought that was refreshing. We weren't trying yeah. to cram more stuff in there. There was no world champion. There was no tag team champions mm-hmm. represented. Um, it was just about the super unity title. And I think in, in some aspect, because if you stick a world title in there, it's gonna be mm-hmm. it's not the attraction. No, for the most part. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, you know, understandably, you're not gonna have Tommy Dreamer at every show. Uh, who is the current champion there? Uh, By the way, he's facing Rhino next time, it's which he's awesome. facing Rhino in a cage the next the show. Cage. <laughs> uh, well, not the next show, but the one in um um uh, when the, the show after the, the show after the I next. I think my friend show. might want to want to come to that. That's there you go, there you go, just to see <laughs> so Rhino. People on board. That's tremendous, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, so so I I you know I think I think it was a perfect pacing, and they did have one thing in there to progress some story that's going on yeah. because you can't just go well, you can't just go two months without addressing certain things yeah. right yeah so <laughs> which that was like one of the best parts of the night as well hmm. when, when joe rosa come on he's like what am i interrupting something is what's going on yeah yeah <laughs> to just say he's, he accepts the challenge but yeah it was, it was pretty cool because we, there was a, a bit of uh, uh in the what is the first match there was a challenge laid down because they interrupted yeah, the match yeah. the one guy lost etc or, no, wait, that was later. That's when they Actually, took it was out later night. It was later in the night uh, when he when he took out Hentai. Yeah. Uh, and then there was it was a, it was a ongoing thread, and we tossed a Britney in the back. Don't ask me how I felt about that, by the way. Um, <laughs> where she's like, "We're going to check in with this situation, and if he's going to accept the challenge or not." And he just wanders out there and distracts Ray Rowe and gets him out of the <laughs> tournament. Uh, which it was fun to watch Ray Rowe just destroy an entire faction. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. but you know, getting ta- counted out in the process. Uh, yeah, but still. Sad. But still, so I'm I'm hoping uh, uh hopefully that, that that sets up for him coming back at some point uh to to right that wrong. You never know. Mm-hmm. You never know. He could end up. Yeah, he has he, his phone now. He has his phone. So <laughs> I wasn't Ray gonna Rowe, tell. I when Ray gonna... Rowe tells you to look for his phone, you look for his phone. By God, yeah. <laughs> isn't isn't Ray <laughs> Rowe telling you, asking you if you have his phone? Yeah. The scariest That's thing like, in your life. You stop That's whatever you're scary. doing. And you look for Ray Rowe's phone. That was like legit one of the. I was staring down. He came over. I'm like, should I continue? I <laughs> I was like looking everywhere for it. I was like, I don't know where it is, but I'm gonna look for it. Bobby's like, like, I'll look for Mr. it, sir. Mr. Rowe, don't hurt us. <laughs> 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 but uh, so so everybody had their experience with Ray Rowe. Uh, mm-hmm. Other than that, I know. It, well, uh, I, I wish we could have had her on too. Uh, she was on a Wrestling Mayhem show earlier, but that was actually Katie's uh, first first show. Mm-hmm. First yeah. indie show, as you, as you was at uh, the, the Gathering of the Juggalos with me last year, that's a little different experience. That's not an indie yeah. show. That's not, I mean, good. it is an indie show, but I mean... No, it's, it's not. It's an experience. It's an experience, yeah. but I mean, there are indie wrestlers there. Um, I mean, the first thing was Kaiju Big Battle. Come on, give me a break. Uh, but that was a blast. But... <laughs> <laughs> um but anyways uh so so how's it hold up you coming back bobby yeah uh, you, you said you're coming to the, the next pro- you're coming i want to come to the next two you're coming to proving grounds i would like to that's a smaller well, show grounds, i think is an interesting show to go to because there is the uh the newer talent initiative mm-hmm. kind of thing right and i think you could find someone you really like there so yeah. right right yeah. right uh I, that's where i discovered i think alex daniels last year and i was like oh yeah then he it was a few months before he, he came back and i remember like i've seen this kid before right and uh and, didn't, and, dylan, and, didn't dylan bostick do that too did he come in? I don't know if he came in at Proving Grounds or not. We'll have to look at the rosters for them. Yeah. They've done like three of them now, right? Um, but mm-hmm. it, but it is interesting because like some talent from other feds, some talent, that's, you know, it really is like like IWC seriously is. This is their NXT program basically, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of times the um, the trainees debut at this one. Um, it's a smaller show. It's not the big presentation that we do at Core Time. Um, they're gonna kill me one of these months. By the way, uh, you know it, it's 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 smaller. It's it's a little tighter. It's out there at White Oak. Uh, there's barely any cell phone reception. Damn it! It's uh, none. It's just, it's zero. <laughs> you're not you're not buying DVDs with a credit card, buddy. I'm sorry. Well, uh, guess what? I'm here with no cell reception in Johnstown. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it all works out. It I'm all used works to it. Out. Anyways. Uh, so, so check it out. Uh, uh, anything else? Any other, thing, other things that stuck out uh, uh, for you for the show before we move on? Uh, what else is there to cover? I guess about uh, it. Well, first, uh, every time I think of like a song, a good engine song that would be cool to come out to, mm-hmm. somebody freaking takes it. Because <laughs> uh, it, it, Trevor, because Lee uh, came out to 
shake it off. <laughs> that was amazing too. Uh, but yeah, you, and you can tell that Lee and Everett were were teaming up before mm-hmm. because they even played it off during the match, like they're they're supposed to be friends and you're supposed to be my buddy. <laughs> Like, I think even one time they said we're we're a tag team. Or yeah, I, I yelled, I yelled, you guys are a tag team. You're supposed to be friends. And he yelled back, best friends hit harder. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. He looked like oh. right at me too. Yeah. That wasn't the only interaction I had for the night though. Mm-hmm. Mr. Labar, I was chanting HGH at Wardlow and um, – <laughs> The other guy. Oh, uh, Bill and, Collier. <laughs> and Labar looked right at me and said, hey, at least you can spell. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. That's amazing. Uh, so, that's amazing. Way, you can say the darnest things. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's go check it out. Thank you guys for joining us. And, and, and let us know your thoughts on Super Indy. Uh, another fun, fun show from well, our friends over there. Next, we got to get you guys to an RWA show. Mm-hmm. Uh, sword, no. Yeah. <laughs> sword. You remember what happened to Riz last time? Okay, sword, maybe we at least get Bobby out there. Moment. Uh, we'll get we'll, we'll at least get Bobby out there. Riz, I, told Wills, I told Wills if they come to Greensburg, which they may. Uh, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I did hear something about that. Maybe. Um. Oh yeah, I did. Hear. Oh, I, uh, uh, but uh. I don't. I don't know if you're allowed to say those things. I don't, I don't know. You're not under the pro wrestling kayfabe NBA. Yeah, that's true. Uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, no, that'd be awesome. That that'd be uh, yeah. But the reason we're saying this, Riz attended one RWA show, and that's when somebody's mother got pile driven in the middle of the ring. Not his mother. Uh, not his mother. I want to make clear. Uh, it sounded weird, uh, but still, it, it was a little weird there. But hey, you know. Hey, by the way, there's something happening in Pittsburgh here. I just discovered this. The AP. Yeah, sorry. I, I just saw that when you posted that. What yeah, yeah. This? So I got a I got a note from somebody who might be involved in this. They're like, "Hey, did you know somebody that somebody wants to?" No, not topical. I know. Don't make me throw bread at you, Bobby. <laughs> it was um 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 from a fellow named Don West. Don West. Okay. No, not that one. It's not he that sold one. Swords on oh. QVC. I double checked it. It's not that one. Not uh, that Don West. But anyways, he he he, he hits me up, uh, and there's apparently a show happening. Uh, thanks, Chris Russo, for for uh, giving him a heads up and passing it along here. So if nothing else, before I check it out, and and, and I don't know, I'm talking with them, see if there's any opportunities. Uh, but there is a commercial going around. Uh, the, oh, jeez, where's it at? Where's it at? Where's my thing? Uh, Bobby, you're not the video. There it is. Uh, But Japanese wrestling, they're actually doing a tour, including uh, PA, West Virginia, North Carolina, and Georgia uh, (laughs) between the 23rd and the 28th of June. So it's really right there around the corner. Uh, They they have a lot of guys from Wrestle 1 involved in this. (laughs) So if you are into some, including the great Muda. Wow. That's Sonny Ono. Holy crap. (laughs) So if you're digging on this Japanese wrestling, this, um, this, this, uh, you know, you know, everything going on here. And plus, uh, it looks like a great roster of guys, you know, guys, we know like facade and, uh, some other like Matt man, Pondo is a part of this as well. Kevin Sullivan's going to be part of this. It looks wow. like the bar- the barbarian's going to be part of this, what? um, oh. somehow. So, uh, uh, check it out. It's, it's going to be in the area here in Bell Vernon, but like I said, there's a bunch of other places, uh, uh, Facebook, uh, AP, uh, APWAWrestling.com if you want to check out more information. Uh, but it's right in the backyard. It's it's a decent price for the tickets. Uh, I, I think it's worth checking out. Mm-hmm. And and uh, so so please go check that out. APWAWrestling.com. Uh, also, I think I just got booked, as in somebody bought tickets and said you're coming with me uh, to uh, AIW's Absolution. Uh, Ooh, next month, which nice. which which uh, includes uh, oh, I want to get this right. I know one of the names on the top of the bill is Samoa Joe. What? No, Vader's on that card against what? Vader. Is it versus Vader? No, he's no, he's not versus. Okay, okay. Man, I, okay. I, you had me worried there, but, uh, Are there so not Vader, are there not matches listed for this one yet? There there are a few. I, no, there are a few matches listed. I know they're doing a ten man uh, tag street fight with uh, dudes on TV, including Samoa Joe. Nice uh, against Young Bucks, uh, Gargano, uh, Prohibition, Alex <laughs> Daniels. Um, uh, will be on that. There's yeah. some. This, uh, this, this is, some, this is, some, this is what I was bacon. shown. 
So yeah, yeah, featuring Samoa Joe and Vader. It's going to be up there July 10th, and uh, apparently uh, I have been reserved to go to it. So, yeah. and if I'm not mistaken, there, Eamon, uh that five uh, the, the dudes on TV is there. There's it. It has Samoa Joe and Ray Rowe on the same team, and and, and Matt Cross. And, Mac and our last I knew, Zima Ion and, was on it. Yeah, also Lee awesome Daisy. that a lot of them are friends of the show, of this <laughs> show. Uh, so so we can also but rename just them. Imagine, just imagine. Oh, and EC3. Forgot about EC3. Jeez, can't get much better. So No. Uh, so that's at arwrestling.com if you want to check that out. Uh, information on that show. Uh, it, I've, I've, we've narrowly... Eamon, you remember, we narrowly avoided going to... And the AIW's absolution that one year. Yeah, because they were doing a devil shot with the uh, with Chikara show. We and right. and yeah. uh, Daniel Bryan was part of both shows. We got to see Daniel Bryan as part of the Chikara show, of course. This is the uh, after the infamous uh, tie incident when he was not <laughs> a part of WWE. Uh, I so that. AIW, but. if you haven't checked them out, they are always doing amazing things. A lot of the guys we know have been, you know, did some stuff up there. Uh, including Jimmy DeMarco, Facade, uh, Zima, uh, Shima Zion, of course. And uh, they always get guys like this, you know? I mean, these are the ones that are some great documentaries coming out of there uh, about women's wrestling, intergender wrestling, including Ricky, Ricky Shane Page being a part of that, Veda Scott and his crazy-ass match with, uh, uh, with her crazy-ass match with uh, Gregory Iron, for instance. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're constantly making waves. They're getting um, recognized for it. And, uh, and it's really, really cool to see. So, uh, AI wrestling. You also, I, I was going to say, you're all, all, as I'm looking at the card right now, you also get to see uh, Tim Dons' first match in professional wrestling uh, since coming back from a, a, a scare with cancer oh, uh, against Nick Gage. So, <laughs> that'll be interesting. <laughs> Nick Gage? Uh, like uh, CZW's Nick Gage. Like, oh, uh, the original CZW. Like, like, like uh, recently released from prison, Nick Gage. Whoa. <laughs> oh, from geez. legit prison. <laughs> oh, jeez. Legit prison. And for you nerds out there. Shoot the, prison. For your nerds out there, I got to point out, there's a video of uh, uh, the, the girl that plays, uh, uh, oh, jeez, Bobby from uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. plugging AIW. Cool. So, uh, Adrian Peliki. Uh, yeah. So that's cool. Uh, Mockingbird. That's the character that she plays. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I just was going to assume that she played Bobby. <laughs> yeah, you said it's me. No, <laughs> no, no, like, no, her character's, no seriously, her character's name is Bobby on the show. B-O-B-B-I-E. Yeah, I, I don't know. B-O-B-I. Oh, okay. B-O-B-I. Bobby. Moby. Moby. <laughs> it's like Moby only. Oh, uh, lady. Yes. lady Moby. <laughs> lady, lady Moby? What is happening? It's way too late. That's what's happening. <laughs> Yeah, uh no, so uh well we'll we'll see if we can get you to an RWA. Wheels gotta see you, Bobby. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. Come on, man. Just I gotta I gotta wheels. see Wheels. At the very least. Cage match and you get to meet Wheels. Let's do this next month, yeah. man. Let's make it oh, let's make this how happen. About next month, like... Leave leave Riz at home because because the ladies get hurt when he goes out there. Yeah. <laughs> and my 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 heart gets hurt when the ladies get hurt. There you go. Rizza don't hurt him. Rizza don't hurt him. Rizza don't hurt him. Rizza <laughs> Jeez, Eamon, is there anything else we need to talk about this week? I think that's about it. Quick plug, uh, though, for Clash of the Bash 2 that will be happening this weekend uh, at Inspire Pro Wrestling uh, this Sunday. Uh, we are throwing the biggest wrestling beach party extravaganza of the summer, and Eamon. you should be at it if you're in Austin, Texas, or around Austin, Texas. Are you, are you going to wear your sailor's cap again? I was thinking <laughs> about it, but also sure. this is kind of going to be like toga-themed. So I don't know if there was sailors put back in that time. Smooth sailing, Eamon Payton. Put the sea captain <laughs> hat on and go with an Inatoga. Smooth sailing. By the sailing. way, if you, we encourage uh, uh, toga uh, attire for this event. And if you come with toga attire, you will be entered in a drawing to win free tickets for our next event. Uh, right. So be sure to do that. Um, but, yeah, and it's going to be a really cool call. Donovan Donhausen, who we just had on uh, this week's show, will be on it. Uh, uh, there's some really cool stuff all, all up and down that card. So, yeah, definitely go check it out. Okay. Make it happen. And, and that's all I got. But yeah, Bobby, Bobby, next step is we're going to get you to an Inspire Pro Wrestling show. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'm down. But you have to pay for your t- for your flight. Oh. Road trip. Road trip. Maybe. I'll rent the pogo stick and go. Okay. 
So Bobby of J-Town will be making it to uh, Clash of the Best 9 <laughs> in, in, in 2020. I'll be wearing a toga on a pogo stick. <laughs> What's left of them? Anyways, on that note, uh, indie wrestling is awesome. Uh, that's the moral of today's story. Uh, you can check out Indie Mayhem Show, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please drop us a line. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412. No, we don't do that on this show. Do that. Four, oh, this is sorry, a serious sorry, show, sorry. Bobby. It's, it's really, damn serious. 412-206-WMS0. <laughs> Please check out wrestling, wrestling, everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to this and all other shows. <laughs> and check out these crazy-ass guys on the Midweek War, uh, where they're talking about all the Wednesday night stuff, including Lucha Underground. Uh, next week, we are scheduled to have Mary Elizabeth Monroe. She's been waves in indie wrestling uh, around the area and beyond. And she's a really, really cool person. Got to talk to her uh, briefly at VW last time I was down there. Uh, last month, I think it was, or the month before. Uh, so we'll have her on to talk about. We also have scheduled on the books the week before Ultimate Lucha. Uh, we are scheduled to have Chris DeJoseph, the writer for Lucha Underground, on the show. He's going to come hang out. Before we... And- before we do that, do that, Sora guy, because I know you are uh, uh, always like uh, on top of the lucha underground. It's Ultima Lucha. <laughs> okay, right. Sorry. Okay, I'm not Sorry. caught up, Sorry. and this is where we reveal I am not caught up with lucha underground. Uh, and and I, I what? Eamon's favorite thing is when I mispronounce luchador's names. <laughs> Like, easy way to pronounce it. So, yeah, yeah. So, what, another qualification is we need to see if we can also book Antonio Garza to correct yeah. us on everybody's names during Mayhem Show and Indie Mayhem Show. Um, when, when so, we suggested show. this on the, on, right, when we were watching Monday Night Raw, though, and I told him, hey, I know these people's names. It's just because I don't, yes. like, because I don't speak or, Spanish. Yes. But you, you don't R. say the names as sexy as Tonio Garza does, or at I, least make a soundboard with all. Of I don't know it, him it, mentioning <laughs> the names because I need play cause, that right because I need more buttons to push in the studio here, Riz. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of buttons. You've been here. You've seen the. Buttons. I know some buttons. I've seen the buttons. You, you have not let me touch the buttons, but I've no, seen you're not allowed to touch the buttons. No, no. I didn't even let Mark Matt Carlin touch the buttons. And he works with a place with way more buttons than me. Sounds weird anyway, out of context. Yes, uh, All right. Yeah. Anyways, uh, check out the Riz and Bobby F J Town. Insert coin to begin dot com at Bobby F J Town at the E Riz and at Riz Plays Games. Amen. Hey, Amen. You're Inspire Wrestling. Inspire, you're, you're you're the heart and soul of Inspire Pro Wrestling. No, <laughs> no, no that's not true. That's all not right. true at all. No, 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 no. <laughs> Um, at Amen 2 please inspireprowrestling.com check out everything at pittsburghwrestling.com that we're working on here and sorgatronmedia.com for everything not wrestling related as well uh, you know the other moral of the story is just damn support indie wrestling okay Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com.